It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Coming to you live from the Lamoille Valley in Vermont. This is the GCN Show. Yay. Welcome to the GCN Show. This week, is cash really king in cycling? Are you limited by the size of your wallet? Can you make it without rich parents? We also have not one, but two fashion disasters. The secret of how pro races go so fast and even more besides, like Tinsel. Yeah, we did say we'd make it Christmassy for you guys. Yeah, if you didn't know it was Christmas oh. before today, you definitely know now. <sighs> Better pick that up. <laughs> this week in the world of cycling, we learned that cyclists logged 8.1 billion miles on Strava in 2020 and climbed 122 billion meters. Which is absolutely bonkers when you think about it. That's like doing a relay to Pluto and almost getting home again. Just as long as we don't get stuck in Uranus, son. <laughs> Very inhospitable there. Uh, we also learned that wheel suckers, whilst potentially very annoying, actually make you go faster. Uh, so aerodynamics guru Bert Blocken crunched the numbers on a whole load of scenarios, including shedding light on how hiding in a peloton saves 95% of your aerodynamic drag. Yes, so we also learned this week just how Dan made it around the torch front. <laughs> yeah, it was really easy, actually. <laughs> sorry. Uh, finally, we learned that you might now have to buy your way to success, at least if you're a budding American cyclist. Yeah, so we're talking about the news which came out last week that the cost of being part of USA Cycling's development program is $10,500 per semester. Mm. And as a headline, that does seem really expensive, doesn't yeah. it? Particularly if you then have to factor in equipment and flights on top of that. So it begs the question, to make it as a budding professional cyclist, do you have to have rich parents? Yeah, so USA Cycling copped some pretty negative headlines for this, didn't they? Which I think is a bit unfair to them, actually. They have recently made membership free to junior riders, which is a great step. They've also got a scholarship fund because, and I quote, the burden of paying for programming should never stand in the way of an athlete's fair chance of taking their career to the next level. Mm. Also, to be fair to them, they are currently raising money to start cycling development teams at historically black and also tribal colleges and universities by raffling off two EF Pro Cycling Edition Cannondales. And it makes us think that USA Cycling are aware that there's an issue of getting into cycling in the first place. So just how bad is it and how elitist is our sport? Well, so if we stick with development academies for a minute and compare cycling to other sports in the US, the cost is about a quarter of hockey, soccer, etc. So I think it's fair to say no one is getting rich at USA Cycling by running these programs. Mm. The problem with cycling, though, is that grassroots sport in most countries is not quite as well developed as traditional sports that might be taught in schools. So you do need a level of parental support to get into them in the first place. Yes, even a success story like the NICA in the US, which is the National Interscholastic Cycling Association, which has school mountain bike race leagues across the country, means that kids do still need to be able to start off by having a bike in the first place. Although once they're then up and racing, it is a fantastic way into the sport. And it seems like once you're doing well there, then support will follow. Mm. And from experience, it feels like in a lot of countries where there is a strong to middling cycling culture, shall I say, after the initial outlay to get an entry level bike, as a young rider, if you are talented and if you act professionally, then you'll often find support from maybe local bike shops, etc., or even companies. There is a whole world of really committed, passionate people who continuously support and nurture young talent, be that from local bike shops, as I said, or cycling clubs, or even teams. Yeah, we need to give those people a shout out. The cycling world relies on kind-hearted people. So thank you, genuinely. Mm. It's easy to get fixated, really, isn't it, on having the best and the newest equipment, particularly in this sport. But I do think there is a bit of a distraction from the subject with that equipment. Yeah, so expensive bikes tend to be faster than cheaper bikes. We know this. But because we all know this, if a rider is going well on a cheap bike, everyone then sits up and takes notice. Far more notice, in fact, than if that rider has deep section carbon wheels and the latest pair of Oakley's. They'd really stand out, wouldn't they? Yeah. I mean, no one wants to support that kid that's got everything already, do they? Uh, as we said, though, that's the case in countries with a strong legacy in cycling. But without a doubt, it's much tougher in other countries. Testament to how few pro cyclists come from Africa. Yes, as much as we think that talented riders can rise to the top of a sport in spite of wealth, 
infrastructure and ultimately money does matter. The most successful teams in pro cycling are those with the biggest budgets. Witness, in fact, the latest reported battle between Ineos and Jumbo Visma for the signature of Wout van Aert for 2022 and beyond. Mm, That's I'd, be like some to be, I'd like to be the subject of that battle, personally. <laughs> I think we should look at the success of British cycling on the track, though, because money poured into the sport in the UK over the last 20 years has completely revolutionised cycling over here, hasn't it? Uh, not taking away anything from the performances of Lizzie Diagnan, Geraint Thomas et al. But would they have been able to show what they're doing now without the funding from previous years? Well, I don't think they would, would they? In Lizzie Diagnan's case, she might not have even taken up cycling because it well, was Well, yeah, the talent scouts money. went into her school, didn't they? Yeah. And I personally benefited hugely from it as well. Unfortunately, British Cycling didn't get that much out of me at the end of the day, but it meant that I was able to, to race. I got equipment support. Yeah, it was. It does make a big difference, I think. I'm going to reveal a story uh, for the first time here on the GCN show now. Go on. Uh, I never got that much from British Cycling over the years, uh, but they did take me to the World Championships as an under-23 in Zolder, which is where I lost these four teeth after eating a barrier leg. Happy memories. They didn't have the barrier protocols in at the time. Uh, uh, however, British Cycling only had insurance for any medical care that I needed over there, not when I got back. So a broken arm, of course, that's fine because it mends itself once you've got it in plaster. When you need new teeth, not so much. Uh, uh, and it was going to cost me about £6,000 to get these implants over 20 years ago, which is a lot of money for a cyclist with not much money at the time. Uh, and they weren't going to pay any of it. And in the end, I wrote Dave Brailsford an email and said that I've seen my lawyers and they say I've got a great case to get some of the funding. And they hadn't done that at all, but he did stump up 4,000 of the 6,000 for my Aww. teeth. That's kind of a nice story. <laughs> <laughs> so I just basically lied. I, mean, you... I couldn't afford new teeth. Dave Brailsford, if you're watching, come and get that four grand back off the And can I also say, uh, a long-time sponsor, Barry Clark of Thurcroft Hotel, paid the other two grand. Like, you do need those people in your life as a cyclist, and without them, it can be hard to make it in the sport, particularly if you've got a big <laughs> gap between teeth. Well, and, and make it on GCN as well if you've got no front teeth. True. Anyway, <laughs> let us know what you think <laughs> about all of this. I mean, do you think that money is a barrier to cycling or will talent ultimately win through? Let us know in the comments. GCN Inspiration now, Christmas edition. Uh, this is your chance to win one of three prizes, which we are not going to wrap up for you, unfortunately. Uh, all you need to do is submit your best photos or videos to the GCN app to inspire the rest of us to get out on our bikes and Sai or I will pick out the best three each week. It's not terribly festive, Dan, is it? No, sorry. Third <laughs> place is quite festive. Uh, congratulations to JR73. Uh, you win a plant-based cyclist book uh, with this uh, festive Christmas tree next to a road. So, uh, sunset cross ride with a Christmas tree in the south of Munich. It's amazing. I like that photo. I do uh, like that photo, to be fair. I can't help but think, though, that if that tree was in any part of the UK, there would be no baubles left on it. No. I love the gesture. I think that's cool. Yeah, we also wouldn't have a sun in the picture. Good either. point. <laughs> Very good point. Uh, well done to you, though. Uh, second place this week received an endurance book and a cobbled classic red stone T-shirt. Uh, that person is Darren Phillip, 26, North Coast 500. Uh, the epic North Coast 500 route we completed in September of this year. Absolutely stunning. And I thought, so that would probably bring back some nice memories. It or does. maybe painful memories for you, I'm not well, sure. Well, yes. Yes, some of them are nice, but a lot of them are very painful. Um, so at least you haven't sent a video of the Black Isle, which is possibly one of my lowest moments on a bike <laughs> of all time. Does um, look good, though. It is oh, a bucket list ride. Oh, it is, absolutely. If you can get weather like that, like uh, like we did as well, oh, just, I think it must be one of the best rides in the world, actually, mm. genuinely. Uh, right, uh, first place this week for the GCN Christmas show, we have winning a GCN Core black T-shirt, a GCN Core jersey, long sleeve, and a GCN Elite Fly 750ml water bottle in black. We have this one that's sent in by Brannigan Harris. What a photo! Look at that! Wow. I love these pieces of bikes enjoying views. Like, I know, it's yeah. just something kind of like, it's like the bike's got, you know, got personality. I'm trying to figure out where that is because it's in the New Forest, which is where I live. I'm not entirely sure where that lake is. Uh, so, Brannigan, if you are watching, I hope you are, uh, let us know in the comments below. You've got another sunrise over the New Forest National Park. Life is getting up an hour earlier to live an hour more and see this. True that. stunning, doesn't it? Yeah. You will have to go to bed an hour earlier, though. Just put it this way. So you might miss something like on TV. 
<laughs> yeah. later on that night. So, yeah. uh, you know, there's a, always a trade off. Still see the sunset, though, won't you, this time of year? Well, you would, yeah. Mm. To be fair, you don't even have to get out that early to see the sunrise at the minute. No. Bit being lazy, really. Basically, yeah. Why are you out of line until quarter past eight? <laughs> get it. Uh, anyway, there we go. Thank you very much for sending in uh, all of your photos and videos. In fact, um, of course, you just have to upload them to the GCN app. And once you're there, you can also look through the gazillions of other amazing inspirational photos up there as well. The ones that don't win each week. It's now time for cycling shorts. Cycling shorts now, and we will start with the news that AG2R have radically changed their jersey for 2021. And not their shorts? No. You ready? Close your eyes if you're of a nervous disposition, by the way. Okay, closed. All right. Is it gone yet? It's gone. Yeah. Uh, yes. Do you know what? My initial reaction to seeing that jersey was that it looked a little bit like the design of a plastic carrier bag <laughs> from a budget supermarket. But it is actually, I said this on the Race News Show yesterday, it is starting to grow on me. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, me too, actually. I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall in the creative meeting on that one. Uh, can we completely change the look of our jersey, guys? Yeah, I think we can. It's been a long time, hasn't it? I think we can be bold with the design this yeah. year. Yeah, can we change the shorts? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Get rid of the brown shorts? No! <laughs> Uh, but we're all talking about AG2R Citroen and we will certainly spot them a mile off next year. So there are plenty of positives. You know, actually, I, I think AG2R, they're committed to black shorts now. It's like... Brown? Yeah, sorry, brown shorts. It's like if you buy a lottery ticket each week and play exactly the same numbers, you know that the week you don't buy a lottery ticket is the week you're going to win. And I reckon they know that the year they don't have brown shorts, Rafa are going to come out with brown shorts <laughs> for EF Pro Cycling and everyone's going to be like, oh my goodness, these are the coolest shorts in the world. Yeah. It's yeah. true, isn't it? They're Stick true. with it, AG2R. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, now, speaking of fashion, fashion disasters, I actually had one of, um, well, perhaps the lowest moment of my time. Worse than this? Okay, almost hit a new low here at GCN. I was filming a video with Mark Threlfall at GTN and um, I forgot my cycling socks. So you cancelled the shoot, presumably? I couldn't cancel the shoot, so I, I did it without socks. <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, the irony of filming with a triathlete and not being able to wear socks either. I was excruciatingly embarrassed. He was a gent about it, by the way. Uh, anyway, so moving on to what we talked about in the first part of the show, we shall be rethinking how to drop wheel suckers because um, well, it turns out that actually wheel suckers are helping you ride faster. Not only because you are trying to drop them and show them all who is boss, but also because having a rider, motorcycle or car behind you can give you a significant aero advantage apparently. It is from a study done by renowned aerodynamicist Bert Blocken who tweeted this incredibly interesting infographic detailing just how much benefit you get from various objects in front or behind you, be they cars, motorbikes, mm. or other bike riders. Yeah, so to get the most benefit from drafting, you need to ride towards the back of a very large and compact peloton. Find the sweet spot there, and you'll only need to produce 5% of the power of the ride at the front of the peloton in overcoming wind resistance, and that's assuming a flat road, no wind, and both rides being the same size and weight. Well, yeah, obviously you will also have to account for rolling resistance, which can be a fair bit at high speed, but still, I mean, that is so low, it's almost hard to believe. I mean, I think even in your current state, Dan, excuse me, then uh, with the right conditions, you might actually keep up. Oh, thanks very much, does that side. Well, you'd be on the front, wouldn't you, given recent form? Head to head on the front with Filippo Ganna. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we all know now, though, that you do get a benefit from having a windbreaker in front of you, like another rider. But what is less obvious is how much benefit you get from having something behind you. So apparently, having that motorbike 0.25 meters behind you will give you an eight and a half percent saving, which presumably means you'll get a not dissimilar saving from having a wheel sucker right on your wheel. Yeah. I'd crack myself if a motorbike was 0.25 meters <laughs> behind me. There, to be fair, and I think I'd still be annoyed with having a wheel sucker there. But it just goes to show as well just how influential motorbikes and cars are in races, in actually deciding the outcome. Hmm. Anyway, moving on, and it turns out that Canyon look like they are on the verge of having a bit of a takeover, or at least some more investment. And it comes from Group Ruxel Lambert and Tony Fidel. Uh, GBR are the largest stakeholder in Adidas at the moment. I know people love the way that I said Adidas last time. <laughs> and so Tony Fidel is quite a big deal as well because he co-developed the iPod and then co-founded Nest Lab. So 
he's quite a bright fella. That you well, yeah, say. I think that's an understatement. <laughs> uh, he's obviously done all right for himself um, because the investment is rumoured to have valued Canyon at eight hundred million euros. Wow, cycling company is doing quite well at the moment. Aren't yeah. They? Pleased yeah. for Canyon though. Yeah, that's uh, right. Speaking of our partners though, we're also delighted to say we've got a brand new saddle partner courtesy of Cell Italia, who also owns Cell San Marco. So our bums are going to have a lot of choice over the next few years. That's right, yeah. Nice. <laughs> You know what, I used to use a Cell San Marco Concorde Lite many years ago and it was the first that I ever had which didn't give me any saddle sores whatsoever to the point where I was petrified of moving to a team, which did happen, where I couldn't use a Cell San Marco. In the end it was alright, turned out I just got a hardened arse, I think, <laughs> but I didn't, I'd be very glad to go back. I don't think they do this Concorde Lite anymore, do they? They, I'm sure they could dust some off for you, Dan. Hopefully, so, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm pleased to be going back to Sir Italia. I'm just going to use whatever Matthew Van Der Poel uses in the hope that that also has some form of benefit to me <laughs> and my performance. Uh, but anyway, we're going to move on now to the Zwift Academy, which has concluded. And so two more riders have secured themselves a pro contract for next season. Yes, exciting stuff. 125,000 people signed up for the Academy this year, would you believe? It's, it's incredible, incredible, isn't it, really? Uh, and after weeks of different competitions and testing, five men and five women made it to the final. But there could only be one winner. Two. There could only be a male and one <laughs> female winner. And they are Neve Bradbury, who's 18 years old and earns herself a place on Canyon SRAM, and Jay Vine, 25 years old, who will ride for the Alperson Phoenix team next mm. year. Both of them Australian. Yeah. I mean, they don't half seem to produce a lot of rides that are great on the Ergo. That was a rubbish Australian accent, wasn't it? <laughs> Considering that they've got some of the best outdoor riding weather in the world. Move on from that quickly, Sam, please. <laughs> <laughs> on the Ergo. I don't know where the accent is from, but it definitely was not any part of Australia. On the Ergo. You're on the Ergo. <laughs> yeah. I'll point a cider after I've got off my Ergo. Mm. Anyway, um, well, I know you also want us to mention the GCN presenter race, don't you? Because uh, Cy took a rather prestigious you. win in our international GCN presenter Zwift race that yes. came out on Saturday. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, no pro contracts on the other end of it for yeah. you, Cy. But you did earn a lot of respect from the fellow... Well, you earned some respect from the fellow presenters, which is more than you had before. <laughs> uh, I've got some more good news for you actually. Oh yeah? Yeah, I spoke to Giro. They have agreed to send you a triple XL helmet to fit your head now. Although your head's so inflated after the win, it'll probably protect itself, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> Built-in airbag. Yes, well, I, I've got to say, I couldn't have done it without, without the team. I mean, admittedly, we're all on the same team, but... Mm. Uh, yeah, so yes, in fact, I've got to thank everyone for letting me win. Uh, but no, it was, it was quite cool, actually. Connor mm. and, uh, and Ollie and Manon and Hank sandbagging behind to let me have that gap. Yeah, Manon wasn't even breathing, really, at the end of the uh, race either, no, despite taking the go. points. We did it again! <laughs> no! She was going ridiculously well. Uh, mm. Why weren't you in that race anyway, Dan? Age restrictions, apparently. Uh, Under 40s only. Yeah, it's a bit of a sad day, really. Yeah, that is tough, isn't mm. it, mate? Right, uh, some more news now, uh, or a reminder at least, to not forget that you can still sign up to the Wahoo SUF training plan. Uh, and you've got a special code from us here at GCM, which will give you 30 extra days for free. That's right, yeah. So if you um, didn't see Ollie and Manon wrapping up their getting ready for winter sort of preparation plan, uh, you can see how they got on uh, in a video that we put up last week. Now, we've also got some competition prizes for you. Are you ready? This is from our Met unboxing video, some very cool prizes. So, a very well done and a happy Christmas to Juan Rubin, uh, Joel Lanto, Jason Makura and Johannes Spreensfield who all won themselves a Met Rivali helmet. But the big prize is that helmet along with a signed Team Issue UAE helmet and signed Tour de France yellow jersey from Tade Pugacha. Oh, I think this might deserve a drum well, Dan. Yes. The winner is Lee Stephen. So congratulations to you, Lee. That, what, like, what a one-off I would prize. love a signed yellow jersey from any Tour de France winner. Yeah, but that's that's a particularly special yellow jersey. It is, it? isn't it, yeah. Particularly special. Well done. Yeah, um, now, just before we leave cycling shorts, speaking of literal cycling shorts for one minute, the GCN winter sale has started in uh, our online shop. So uh, do make sure you go check it out because there is loads and loads of cool stuff on there. Uh, and now, Slightly cheaper for mm. a limited amount of time. Have we got anything suitable for a Canadian winter in the online store? That's the question. If you buy enough of them. <laughs> yeah, layer up. Yeah, so I think it was something like 12 long sleeve jerseys yeah. and it'll be optimal for, uh, for Canadian winters. 
minus, what is it, minus 60? Something like that? <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. Hack. Forward slash bodge of the week now, and we're going to start with this one from Jonathan Pape. 3D printed. Nice. Phone mount. Uh, using my Pixel 3 XL on my out front Garmin mount. Due to the phone's size, it would end up getting in the way of my hands when indoor training. Got my brother to 3D print a mount and got a spare case to raise it up and out of the way. It's a massive phone, isn't it? It is a massive phone, and it's also like. That phone is the same size as the helmet it's on its way to, so. <laughs> that big. Um, it's not the most elegant looking. Mount, is it? Oh, I thought you were going to say hack before it even finished, as soon as I said 3D printed. Well, I so. did. And I do th obviously still think that it's a hack because it's 3D printed, but I um, wonder whether there's a bit more kind of refining can be done on that initial mm. prototype. Well, if you're on the fence with this one, Si, then you will match our app users. 50-50 oh, really? hack bosh oh, wow. on this one. Uh, so if you'd like to sway things one way or the other, head over to the app well, and you cast your vote there. there. Uh, hack, 3D printed. Done. Job done. Congratulations to you. Right, next we got this one from Danny uh, Tauscher. I love this. Stealth case. So a self-made case that goes between the bottom bracket and the bottle cages, holds an inner tube, a multi-tool, and some money. Wow. Made from black silicon. And I just, like, a lot of super fast, slippery triathlon bikes have got cases down there. And I'm not saying that I think they look cool because they're a triathlon bike, but they look cool. And I think that... Just what an awesome place to store it, and you go faster. How do you mount it or fix it to the frame? It presumably doesn't rely on gravity and having gravity and having bottles in it. No, it does look. I mean, it looks great. I'm sure it has got a fixing point somewhere, but you can't see it, which makes it even better. That's a hack yeah. for me. Ha yeah, ha hack for me. And 84% of you lot think is a hack as well, which yeah. makes me wonder what 16% of you had thought was wrong yeah, with what it. What a bodge that is. Looks terrible. Yeah. Uh, next up from Andy. If I fit, I sit. Passenger pick waiting at a stoplight. Not sure how, but didn't want to drive directly behind them for a closer look. Oh my word. I've just worked out. I mean, it literally is just going to. Is that just resting on the back of his, Looks his spare that way, tire? isn't it? Well, that's a little bit frightening, isn't it? Yeah. I'm not so worried about the bike. You know, obviously, if that person's bike falls off and it detonates, then, you know, that's obviously unfortunate. You'd be all right doing that with the acceleration you've got on your retro forward focus, wouldn't you? Well, that's true, yeah. But it's more just what happens when it falls off on other people mm. behind. I would not want to be hit by a flying bike. No, my bike flew off the roof of the uh, DFL car on the way to the National Championships in 2007, so I had to use a spare, my spare. What happened to the... But that isn't the bike. Just... No, it was titanium at light speed. It got a big dent in the in the frame to the point I couldn't use it. Anyway, sorry. Uh, Megan Cycles, Hackle Bodge. Great wrapping hack, but bodged. No surprise. <laughs> you can sort of tell what you're going to get with a present that's wrapped up like that. Being a track pump, can't you? Uh, bought a bicycle pump for my husband as a gift and thought I'd give it a great wrapping treatment. <laughs> The best thing about that wrapping is that you'd actually not really need to take it off. He could just have a Christmas pump, couldn't you? Yeah. Know? Just put a little hole in the um, in the head of the pump so that the air can come out. Well, maybe I, just put I, a little I, cut round so the handles go up and down. I'm going with hack for that just because uh, I think it's funny. Yeah, I'd say that's a hack. Well, and also because it's got one of the um, little... Uh, what are they called? The little know, things that you stick on wrapping to make it look oh, extra bow. special. Well, it's not really a bow, is it? It's like one of the... Yeah, I don't know what that is either. <laughs> Let us know in the comments below. <laughs> Come on, let's move on. We're just taking forever again, so we're wittering on here. <laughs> Sorry, we've got this one sent in by uh, Johan Duffberg, um, which is a gear adjustment hack. And I've got to say, Dan, I like this one. Going to preempt everyone's reactions here. Um, it uses laser beams. That's Not often we get a laser beam. Bodge, yeah, it? exactly. Um, so Johanna said, I couldn't get it right after a three-year-old decided to help out when I was adjusting my DI2 gears. But one laser beam later, and everything was back to normal. Now, I don't think the three-year-old got laser beamed. It was the cassette uh, aligning um, the rear derailleur underneath it. Mm. So, um, hack. I mean, it's a hack for me. It is a hack for me. I mean, technically, you don't need laser beams to index your gears correctly, but uh, mm. but I like that you've used one anyway. A bit like 3D printing. It's just like a hack, isn't it? Because it's yeah. a laser beam. I definitely think that was a hack. Yeah. Uh, I didn't really understand it, but I went with everyone else. I already looked at the results before you read them out. So. <laughs> uh, next up, uh, Dip Schmidt 5. <laughs> what a great name. <laughs> Uh, dead lights. I was going out for daily early morning trips, but the light was dead. Uh, so this was the next best thing, and my neck is a little sore <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
that's absolutely genius. Mm. You shouldn't yeah. blind the oncoming traffic. Well, I was going to say, yeah, you'd have the world to yourself with that thing. It'd just be like a trail of devastation as people are blinded and then drive into, into the bushes. Bodge. Yeah, a massive bodge, isn't it? Mm. I mean, that thing must weigh an absolute ton. But uh, there we go. <laughs> anyway, uh, we've got one final entrance to Hackle Bodge um, from Mr. Oliver Bridgewood. Look at this cake. Whoa. Now, Dan, I don't know where this cake has gone because I've not seen this in person. No, yet. well, uh, I can guess where it's from. I don't actually know, but I know where it's from. Oh, really? Uh, because Ollie put it on his post. He thanked Stethoscopes. Uh, who made this. I think it's mega and it's packed full of booze. Wow, that is a good cake. Uh, awesome, and thanks so much. Uh, I presume that the person's name is Steph, uh, and if you're watching Steph, he was over the moon was. with this cake, wasn't he? He was, he was absolutely delighted. delighted with it. And yeah, I think he he's eaten it all himself, didn't share it around with anyone. No. Mm. Anyway, uh, that draws Hacks and Bodges to a close for this week. 91% uh, people went with Hack for that one. Uh, it was 100% from Ollie. Uh, make sure you keep submitting your Hacks and Bodges. We'll have more for you in... Well, we're already recording next week's show, haven't we? Two weeks' time. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Caption competition time now. That part of the show where you get a chance to win a coveted GCN Elite water bottle. Oh, yes. Uh, all you've got to do is put a witty caption in the comment section down below to a photograph that we're about to give you. But of course, it's results time first, from last week. Yeah, this was the photo that you had to caption and our winner is Nick Guest, who put caption, too much 3D air on those saddles. Uh, you would have had to have watched last week's show to understand that caption, but we thought it was very witty, didn't we? So That's well right. done to you, Nick. I uh, wonder, send us a message on Facebook with your address, we'll get that bottle sent out to you. I wonder whether actually that was less 3D air and more anti-gravity, because, uh, does look a little bit like uh, <laughs> yeah, it probably was anti-gravity, wasn't it? Indeed. Uh, this week's photo is from the World Cup cyclocross in uh, Namur. Uh, that is Jumbo Visma's Tim Van Dyke. He was on Chitty Chitty Bang Man, wasn't he? Tim Van oh, Dick Van Dyke. Uh, I'll get you started. Go on then, mate. Um, if you do that again, I'm going to hit you with my Bianchi. I did spend a little while thinking about that earlier. I couldn't really come up with anything better, but it does look like he's having a little bit of a fight with the... What do you call that? Padding? Yes. Oh, I see where you've gone with that. Yeah. Great. Yeah, well, cheers, well done, mate. mate. Yeah. yeah, thanks very much. <laughs> really good. Uh, do your best in the comment section down below. We'll pick a winner in two weeks' time. As ever, before we get on to what's coming up on the channel, we're going to read out a few of our favourite comments. And since it's Christmas time, we should all be feeling generous, uh, I thought we could pick out a few of the complimentary comments about each of us over the last week or really? so. Yeah, so I asked you to do that earlier. We'll see what you've got. I'll start with one Thanks for you, Brian. Si. Uh, from Squeezy Hugs underneath last week's show. I have to say this much about Si. Uh, he has such an infectious smile. He just lights up the screen. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. Picking it out. Thanks, My Squeezy pleasure. Hugs as well. That's really kind of you. Um, I've found this one um, from Nathan Rutterbush. Uh, the guy on the right... Yeah, uh, looks like a tweaker, Hugh Jackman. Now, <laughs> I think, I, do you think you meant weaker? Well, I think weaker, but Hugh Jackman, got to take that one. No, I, I'd take looking like a weak Hugh Jackman. Yeah, that's any brilliant. day of the week. I haven't looked on Urban Dictionary to see whether tweaker is is a rude word, but um, anyway, let's just go with weaker. It's probably yeah. in Dad's Digest somewhere, isn't it? Yeah, um, that's cool. Oh, yeah, thanks yeah. for that, Hugh mate. Jackman. Yeah, 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 yeah I'll take that one. I've yeah. uh, got another one here for you from Pete F fifteen. Uh, they had to get Ollie to do this. This is the time trial versus road bike with uh, Connor Swift. Because, as we know, Cy Richardson is faster than everything in existence <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh, you guys. Yeah. Thanks for giving me this. I'm enjoying this. Yeah, cool. Right, well, anyway, moving on. So, um, with... Um, <laughs> this didn't have... There weren't any more... Sorry, mate. Oh, there's none more about no, me? There was just... You just only got one. one complimentary comment. Yeah. Did you not one, make an it? effort or were there no more? No, I made an effort. So, um, <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I went back no, to August, but um, <laughs> didn't want to go any further, if I'm yeah. completely honest. Anyway, so underneath that video, um, where uh, Aero Amateur versus Tour de France Pro, uh, James Heaton points out that uh, Ollie's Doncaster roots coming out in his accent in this one. That should yeah. be Doncaster. <laughs> yeah, Nelson Glover along the same lines. Does Ollie get more northern when he speaks to another northerner? Uh, yeah, we currently assigned Ollie to write some subtitles for that video, for those of you who don't understand what on earth he's on about. He's like a, a an accent chameleon, Ollie, isn't he? Well, he I is, guess yeah. that is where he's from. Uh, meanwhile, on the last week's show, Tommy Phillips, but I think the UCI should ban top tubes to stop top tube descending. 
good point, that. Yeah, that is a good point. Well, that kind of contravenes their other regulation about triangular frames, doesn't it? Yeah, that, yeah. They've been a bit of a quandary on that one. Yeah, it's a difficult one, that, isn't it? It's quite a lot of debate about uh, the UCI potentially banning top tube descending. Well, actually, not much debate, just a lot of hate, wasn't there, really? Well, there's a lot of UCI bashing goes on, isn't there? Which is why we said that we wanted to compliment them on what we thought would be good decisions, really, that they'd made, although not yeah. everybody agreed with us. No, exactly. We do support them on that one, actually. Um, anyway, uh, under the uh, Did GCM Beat Winter video, CNE pointed something interesting out. At 357, Manon has very big calf muscles. And yes, the way this video is edited, it does it. <laughs> Manon is exceedingly <laughs> shredded in the calf department. But um, I believe those might have been Chris Opie's calves. Oh, were they? I thought they were Hanks. I know they were like Manon's, that's all I know. They, they might have been Hanks, yeah, they, they did look particularly and I know they weren't big. mine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or yours. I'm not, I mean, the cars look similar, it was the ankles, so they're quite small. <laughs> right, so let's let you know what's coming up on the channel over the next seven days, I say. Uh, on Wednesday, coach versus off the peg training plans. Uh, we make a comparison and help you decide what might be right for you, a personalized one from a real life coach or one that you get off the peg. Uh, Ron Seal title, I think you might say. Uh, on Thursday, we've got a 15 minute high intensive interval training video for you to work out along to on GCN training. It's without music this one, isn't it? That's right, so Mondays with music, Thursdays without music. And then on Friday on GCN Racing, top 14 rider transfers uh, for 2021. And since it's Christmas Day, you've got your GCN bloopers. Wow. Well, that's a good point, actually. Are handcuffs good bike security? I don't really know. I've never used them for that. No, no, I haven't. Can you normally get out of them, can you? Well, no. I, I don't, I'm not in them. What are you on about? I don't know, you just said you don't use them for that. So I assume you've used them for someone else. What are you? What are you using for? It's all tying up other people, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Cut. <laughs> I always enjoy them. Yeah, looking forward to that I just like one. seeing people make mistakes and laughing at them. Yes, yes, it's funny that, isn't it? Um, on Saturday, we have got uh, a proper cool video, this one, actually. Shortest day, longest ride. It's like the hare and the tortoise. Hank on a TT bike versus Mark Beaumont on an endurance bike racing from sunrise to sunset. So you've got to make sure you check that out, it's very cool. Uh, and then on Sunday, we have got gravel bike versus gravel bike. Okay, so we compare gravel bikes to all sorts of different things, but actually they're so diverse, we put one from one end of the spectrum against one from the other end of the spectrum to see how they got on. Cool. It was the wettest, coldest day I've ever filmed in Dan. It was unbelievable. <laughs> But anyway, it was good fun, nevertheless. Yeah. You should stick to the studio like I do most of the time. <laughs> yes, good point. Uh, right, there, and also there is a video on uh, GCN training as well on Saturday. Mm. And then on the Monday, you and I are going to be back for the Racing News Show, a uh, special pre-recorded edition where we look back at some of the stranger moments of the 2020 road season. And there were a lot of strange moments mm. in 2020. Dan, before we leave the show, it's been a while, but it's time for Extreme Corner, yes, and it's a festive Extreme Corner, would you believe? Kevin Huffman, aka Santa Claus, takes to some dirt jumps. Amazing. Love yeah. an extreme corner back. Yeah. Who knew Santa Claus wore a jumpsuit? Well, yeah. Oh, what? A jumpsuit. The pun about his jumping. Anyway, uh, you can find a link to the full video in the description just below this video, and it is well worth checking out. Absolutely, it is. Um, thank you very much for watching another GCN show. Please, if you enjoyed it, do give it a thumbs up as well. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>